Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, from, morning, everybody. Uh, from both of us at the rectory uh, for our online Sunday morning service in the parish of Ellesmere Port. It's a real sniff of spring in the air. And uh, it's our prayer today that uh, as we see the world around us, creation being renewed, we be renewed in our spirits as we worship together today. Well, we're going to start with some notices before we come into our main act of worship. And so you should be seeing those on the screen just now. Uh, so we're connecting together today, but lots of opportunities to connect in the week that we're seeking to keep going so that we, we join up together. Coffee and chat on Wednesdays, which is uh, going a real whiz at the moment and a great place to connect. And uh, Jill has the link for that as she hosts it on a Wednesday for us. Craft and natatatata on Fridays at 3 p.m. People have really been enjoying uh, using their creative gifts and just a lovely time to talk together. Ongoing, the Unanswered Prayer course, which we started last week and proved really very powerful right from the word go. Um, if you've not joined in with it yet and would like to, you can catch up with the first session uh, free online. Do sort of get in touch with us if you need to know how to do that and come and join us next week for what is a really powerful and really worthwhile time together. It will be beginning um, at, uh, just to interrupt Julia, it begins at quarter to eight yes. on Wednesdays. So it'll be this Wednesday at quarter to eight. Lovely. And Gordon, do you want to say something about church reopening on Palm Sunday? Yeah, um, with, the, with, the, with the, the, the lifting of lockdown being gradual and this roadmap that the um, Prime Minister has outlined, but making everything provisional, we've looked at the data for our area and we think uh, the safest time for us to reopen will be Palm Sunday. We're also mindful of it being the Easter season and we really do want to be able to uh, have some sort of physical present worship in church um, Palm Sunday and onwards. So we are looking to reopen for worship at nine o'clock at St Thomas and at 11 o'clock at St Lawrence from Palm Sunday onward. Of course it says hopefully because uh, that will depend on uh, on things being kept under control as the various liftings of lockdown take place uh, in a measured way over the next few weeks and months. So we are so please be praying that we can open up on Palm Sunday and be open on Easter day um, and be able to worship um, in church when we weren't able to last year if you remember. So that's that's where we're at. Super thank you. Um, online outreach. Uh, as we continue online, it is a wonderful opportunity for people just to come and take a look at what goes on uh, behind church doors and see through the, the window of the computer um, how we worship together and to, to take part as they wish. So do use that opportunity to uh, invite people along to see what we're up to on a Sunday and at other times. Uh, Please also remember, keep in touch with one another and keep in touch with us if there's things going on that uh, you'd like us to know about, to pray about. Please don't feel out on your own. Uh, make sure you keep in touch with us and an encouragement to all of us to keep in touch with everybody else too. Well, birthdays. Uh, we're going to have a few birthdays coming up fairly soon, but we have one special one to celebrate today from last Wednesday, and that's Sheila Bangay. So, Sheila, a really happy birthday. Um, we're going to pray for you. Shall we do that now, Gordon, before we sing? Let's okay. have a prayer, okay, Sheila. Let's have a prayer. Lord, we just want to thank you for Sheila and for the gentleness and graciousness of you that we see shining through her. And Lord, we pray that uh, you would shine your love into her over this particular time of the year for her. And pray that you'd renew her and give her joy in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And let's give her a song as well. Sheila? Happy birthday to you. Ding well, I hope that's brought a smile to your face, Sheila, because it's certainly brought a smile to ours. <laughs> and uh, here's something else to bring a smile to our face. This is uh, our photograph this week, our postcard of life. And these are our Easter chicks that are gradually being made, a whole bunch here little cluster made by Denise Richardson. So these were all her work. And these are gonna form part of our uh, gift outreach to children 
um, as we come up to Easter. So there they are gathering and swimming around on our table, all ready to go. So thank you, Denise, for that. And uh, thank you for sharing that picture with us. And uh, it's now time for Phone a Friend. Um, and this morning I'm going to be ringing uh, uh, Margaret Disbury. Um, so I'm hoping she's going to be on the line and we're, we're going to go to her now. It's lovely we can use different uh, means, every means possible by technology to join ourselves together and uh, just pray a blessing on Margaret as we begin our worship together. So we have our opening prayer on the screen. I will speak the leader's line and Gordon will join in with the all line. So, uh, so follow him and uh, I'll do the, the other bits. So generous God, bringer of justice, you are the source of our truth. Gathering God, lover of courage. You are the source of our strength. Glorious God, light of the nations. You are the source of our joy. Gracious God, meet with us. As we offer you our worship. Well, let's come and offer him our worship. We're going to be uh, looking today at passage from Exodus and the, the awesomeness of God uh, at Sinai. So let's uh, just come into a sense of that awesomeness of our great God as we sing together the splendour of the King. God had three in one 
So we've sung how great is our God and there's an opportunity to speak that out in the words of our psalm. Do follow from where you are and if there's a line that particularly strikes you, resonates with you, uh, do declare it out as loud as you like because we won't hear from here, but God will hear you from wherever you are. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. Well, the Lord doesn't give up on us, does he? And uh, as we seek him with all our heart, he can continue to do that in our next song. And he comes to meet us where we are. Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness. step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here i am to worship here i am to bow
And so we continue our worship by opening our hearts to the Lord in our prayer of preparation. And so we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. So let's just take a moment to become aware. We've uh, talked a bit about the spring coming and spring shows up some of the dust and dirt that needs cleaning. And you know what? Spring cleaning needs to happen every year. And we need to keep coming back to the Lord to uh, allow him to cleanse us, to refresh us, to renew us in his life. So just a moment to bring to the Lord areas where we sense we need his renewal, refreshment from his forgiveness this morning. And so we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Loving Christ, hanged on a tree yet risen in the morning, scatter the sin from our souls as the mist from the hills. Begin what we do, inform what we say, redeem who we are, for in Christ we place our hope, our great hope, our living hope, this day and evermore. Amen. Amen. Do we have a collect, Gordon? No? We do indeed. We have indeed, it's lovely. Let's say this together, folks. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings, and by following in his way, come to share in his glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to have our reading now, and this morning, Jill Blaine is bringing it to us. The reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verses 1 to 6, and then chapter 20, verse 1 to 17. Exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. After breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. The Lord called to him from the mountain and said, Give these instructions to the family of Jacob. Announce it to the descendants of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the peoples on earth. For all the earth belongs to me. And you will be my kingdom of priests, my holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth, or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, 
am a jealous god who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honour your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbour. You must not covet your neighbour's house. You must not covet your neighbour's wife male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we come to our, our talk, let's just uh, let's ask God to bless us this morning. Father, um, the Ten Commandments are perhaps familiar to us all in one way or another, uh, we might even be able to recite them because of Sunday school teaching in the past. But words that are on our lips have to be uh, truths that are in our hearts. So when it comes to following you and following Jesus, make us mindful of his commandments to us and by your spirit enable us to keep them. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, I wonder, have you come across um, the great cabbage myth? Um, perhaps you have, perhaps you haven't. I'm just going to, I've just realised I haven't got the, the picture I wanted here, but I'll try and bring it up. Um, basically, uh, oh gosh, where's it gone? Yes, the great cabbage myth. It goes something like this. Um, the Lord's Prayer has 66 words. The Ten Commandments have 179. The Gettysburg Address 286 words, but the European Union regulations on the sale of cabbage, 26,911 words. Oh, don't we wish that could be true, but unfortunately it's a myth. It never actually happens. There is no EU regulation on the sale of cabbage and certainly not one with that many words. The myth may have its origins in the, in the States, in fact, where there were some regulations about growing cabbages, but even then it wasn't that many words. Though, so the story isn't true, but um, and it has a long history going back to the 40s. But what it does illustrate is our tendency to be somewhat negative about rules, about regulations, about red tape. And there's that suspicion in us that those who make the rules are often humorless and they're nitpickers and they're out to spoil our fun. Now, it has to be said, such people do exist. Um, my father had a janitor who, uh, when he was at college, and uh, my father was just bringing out a, a class to teach them basketball, and this janitor had just polished the basketball court, and he tried to say to my father the rules where he couldn't use the basketball court for basketball because he'd polished it. Such people do exist, and we've all come across people who make rules just for the sake of it. But if we're honest, we actually need rules. If life is to be safe, harmonious, productive, and fun. And if you don't believe me, think how you feel when you're the one put out by someone else breaking the rules. 
Today, we're looking at what are perhaps the most famous rules in history, the Ten Commandments. Right away, we should note that the Hebrew word that's translated commandment is actually word, and that the ten words are ten words from God. In this case, God is the rule maker. So does this make God a celestial nitpicker out to spoil our fun? Well, some people think so. I remember a joke, not a very good one, that I heard a few years back about Moses coming down from the mountain and saying to the Israelites, I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is God wants it to be rules. The good news is I've got him down to 10. But the joke isn't quite right. 10 words, yes, but they function as sort of headings which are unpacked later on in Exodus and Leviticus and indeed in Deuteronomy, where we find specific rules that put the 10 words into practice. So why are there rules? Is God trying to make life miserable? Not at all. And when we look at the 10 words closely, we will see that this is the case. As one author has pointed out, these 10 words from God restore to his people something that had been taken from them in their slavery. These words set them free, free from pagan gods and free to be with and to worship their liberating God. Freedom to work with dignity and to have time off work. Free to maintain proper family relationships and to have those respected and to construct a framework of law and order that respects others and protects them from a might is right mindset. Another author has observed that these 10 rules were given particularly to the heads of the extended families or clans that made up Israeli society at this time, Israelite society. They were therefore God's guidance to leaders on how they should serve those for whom they were responsible, keeping them safe and enabling them to flourish. So these words are a freedom charter and they describe a lifestyle for those who have already been chosen by God. They're not conditions of entry into the family. They are the rules by which family life is maintained and flourishes. So do these words apply to us today? Well, the short answer is yes. When we look ahead to the particular and numerous applications of these words, we find in the later chapters of, of these books, we find that some of those specifics apply to the particular context in which God's people find themselves. They were, after all, on the move and surrounded by pagan peoples whose customs and practices would have threatened their unique calling to be the people of God. But the ten words are a foundation for all contexts and all circumstances that God's people find themselves in throughout history. We may not need regulations about how to prepare meat or how to gather um, and all the things that were applicable to, is to the Israelites back then. But we do know that these commandments are important because Jesus summed up the ten in the two and proclaimed the two as the greatest of all rules ever made. The first four of the Ten Commandments are summarized as love God with all you've got. The second six as Alert love from your software update. Love your neighbor as yourself. And the ten go a long way to show us what love is and what love in action should look like. Now, I'm not going to go through them word by word, as it were. We're going to use the Ten Commandments as a basis for our intercessions this morning. And that will help us to look and to see what putting God's words, 10 words into practice might look like in our day and in our day-to-day -day living. But what I do want to do this morning is to help us to think about why there need to be rules at all. And how it is that rules set us free rather than close us down. More than that, how rules, usually the rules we puzzle over most, actually prepare us for the good future God has in store for his people. You see, some of the rules that we read um, later on in Exodus and the like are rules that will only apply when God's people are settled in the land. They don't make particular sense until they are rules about land and land boundaries and the like. Some of the things that God lays upon us as rules or as guidelines or whatever we want to call them 
are getting us ready for the world that we yet we have yet to inhabit, the life of the age to come. And so God is training us for what is to come. Rather like squaddies um, in the army uh, doing things in boot camp, which seem sort of meaningless at the time, get them ready for the very different world that they're going to be in, the world of warfare, the world of threat, where they need to be able to react almost without thinking in order to stay safe. So there are different types of rules that are present in our lives, and they often interact or overlap with each other. First of all, there are the basic rhythms and patterns in nature that are so obvious and reliable that we call them rules. We call them the rules of nature. So there is the law of gravity. And the rule that if you step off a tall building, you're going to go in one direction, and it's likely to be your last trip. Life wouldn't be possible on this planet without these rhythms, but life can also be endangered by them at the same time. So there are man-made rules designed to protect us from them and to enable us to live, sa to live safely in our world environment. Sometimes they can be seen to be prohibitive, but they're actually protective. No swimming from this beach. Keep away from the cliff edge. No entry. Protective clothing must be worn and the like. Then there are the rules we have to enable us to live together harmoniously and productively, happily and safely. Think the highway code, the rules for the road, without which driving would be hazardous, to say the least. The ten words, the ten commandments, fit into this category with the added insight that true happiness and harmony are only really possible when God's involved. And of course, this is where the fun begins, because now we have to consider the human factor, specifically the common condition of the human race, what I call eye disease, the, the letter I, me, me disease, the innate tendency we all have to put ourselves first. And that, by the way, includes Christians, as well as those who don't have any faith. Like COVID-19, we may be variously symptomatic, but unlike COVID-19, we've all got eye disease. And one of the, uh, of the symptoms of eye disease is an aversion to rules. Again, think the highway code. You may know that the police don't like talking about traffic accidents these days. They want to call them traffic incidents because they're not accidents. They arise because people break the rules. And the rules of the road get broken because we're in a hurry or because that idiot in front of us is going too slowly or because there's no one at the traffic lights that I can see or, well, you get the picture. And as with the rules of the road, so with the rules of life. Eye disease means we don't love God with all we've got. And we don't love our neighbours as we love ourselves. No wonder we say, after the recitation of these commandments in our normal communion services, Amen, Lord have mercy. So it turns out that having the rules isn't enough. Yes, we need them. Yes, we absolutely need to keep them. But we find ourselves unable to do so, no matter how hard we try, because we have eye disease. And rules can't cure eye disease. So what's to be done? Well, we need to recognize that the rules of God were always a way of expressing and living out a relationship with God. It's the relationship which is important. It's the relationship that comes first. Hence the ding dong between Jesus and the Pharisees who thought the rules were made for man. Or, well, man was made for the rules rather than the rules made for man. And the relationship that we need with God has to be on the inside. And when God is on the inside, then the spirit-empowered life becomes possible. And the spirit-empowered life results in lives characterized by love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that is living the rules rather than keeping them. So our challenge is not to try harder to keep the rules, but to humbly ask God for more of his spirit in us so that we learn to live 
the rules. This is the primary work of the Spirit in us. He is our eye disease vaccine, if you like, the one who both heals us of our self-centeredness and controls its symptoms. It is he who makes it possible for us to both love God with all we've got and to love others as we love ourselves. So our challenge from this morning isn't, how do I try harder when it comes to keeping the 10 uh, expressed in the two? The question is, how can I open up to the spirit and let him create in me a desire to love God with all I've got and a desire to love my neighbors as I love myself? So I end with a short parable, which some of you have heard before. It's the parable of the Amazon delivery man. Imagine you hear a knock at the door and when you open it, there's a man who says, I'm here to make a delivery. Oh, you say, what have I ordered? Well, he says, it's not so much an order as a request, a prayer actually, that you've been making to God for a life that is pleasing to him and full of joy and purpose, where you know what is to be done, you know who is to be loved, and you're empowered to do so in your loving of others and in your loving of God. Wow, you say, that sounds great. Where do I sign? And the man smiles and says, oh, you don't need to sign anything. You just need to show me to my room. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says Jesus. Are you going to let me in? Thanks for listening. Thank you, Gordon. I, I think, you know, speaking personally, this shift from sort of getting it right and obeying the rules to actually just letting go and being in relationship um, and the rules emerging out of that relationship is, is one of the biggest shifts I think we make as Christians. Um, it's not about doing it and keeping the rules. It's about allowing God's spirit to, to live in us and we find ourselves living out that freedom and protection by following him that he's called us to. So, so thank you for drawing us back to that, that real kind of um, no, strong point of our faith, that one of the things that we really need to um, take on board. Um, do you want to say something? Yeah, I'm just saying, as we go on, if people have um, any questions or comments they wish to make about the talk, please post them in the chat box and uh, uh, we'll, I'll try and pick them up as we, as we go through the service. I don't want to distract us from our worship and our intercession, but um, rules is something that um, people have very, very different views about. And... Uh, um, but it's important for us to, 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 to know the mind of Christ in this, because as he himself said, I haven't come to abolish the law, I've come to fulfill it and to enable you to do so. So, yeah, if you've got any comments or questions, please post them as we go on. All right, well, we're going to have our, our next song, which is a new one to us, and it's quite a reflective song. And you may find there's quite a simple chorus to join, join in with called I Surrender. And we can just use it as an opportunity, I think, from in the light of what Gordon said, to to try and let go of this white knuckle ride of trying to keep all rules and get everything right to to opening up and uh, allowing the spirit to work in us by letting go and letting God. So let's use this song to bring us to that place.
as those within whom the spirit lives, we declare our faith in him. We believe in the gift of creation. God created us and this beautiful world. He has given us the gift of being creative too. We believe in the gift of love. God loves us and gave his only son for us. He wants us to use the gift of love towards everyone we meet. We believe in the gift of sharing. Jesus came to earth and shared his life with others. He has given us many things and wants us to share with others. We believe in the gift of forgiveness. Jesus died on the cross so we can be forgiven. He wants us to use the gift of forgiveness towards those who have wronged us. And we believe in the gift of prayer. The Holy Spirit of God helps us to pray in Jesus' name. He wants us to use the gift of prayer in worship and service to others. And so we have an opportunity to use the gift of prayer now as Gordon leads us in our intercessions. And as is our custom these days, um, as I leave these intercessions, there'll be an opportunity uh, to post our prayers um, as we go through. These prayers are based on the Ten Commandments. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have commanded us to have you at the center of all things and to allow no other gods to take your place. Keep us faithful to you alone. Dethrone the idols in our lives and give us the grace to honor, love and trust you above all things. And so we bring to God perhaps areas of our lives who are tempted to trust in other things, in our own strength, in other people. We name before God those areas where we're tempted to take control and to do it our way. Father, I pray particularly for those of us who are in ministry, where we can so easily rely on our own strength, our own understanding, uh, our own ability to form words or whatever. Lord, help us also to be simple and direct in prayer, not feeling we have to impress you or thinking that our impressive prayers might actually persuade you to answer them. Father, we bring to you this coming week and those different challenges, tasks, conversations and meetings we're having where the temptation is to use our own strength to get things done rather than to look to you to enable us to be the people you want us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, your name is holy. Stop us from making it or from using it in unholy ways. Above all, Lord, stop us from using your name to justify actions that we've already decided to do uh, by ourselves. Father, may we be reminded that we were baptized into the body of Christ and that part of our calling is to be holy as you are holy. We pause just to bring to you, perhaps in the silence of our own hearts or perhaps on the screen, areas of our lives where we want to be cleaned up, where we want to build our trust, and where we want to reflect the holiness of God to those around us. Father, I pray about my driving and my attitude towards other drivers. I pray about holy living on the inside, in my thoughts and in my fantasies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Almighty God, you created six days in which to work, and the seventh you made a day of rest. Grant that we may find a day of rest in our busy weeks, where we make space just for relaxing, but also for being close to you. May busyness not um, push you out of our day-to-day -day experience of life. May we make times for prayer, reflection, worship. We bring to God people who have to work seven days a week because of the circumstances of their employment. We pray for those who are tempted to work seven days a week because they're self-employed and don't want to miss any opportunities for making money. We bring to you parents and other carers who 
have to find rest within a 24-7 lifestyle of caring for those who need them. We pray for those who work shifts, which means that their day off might be a different day each month or each week. And we pray for those who need spiritual as well as physical rest, whose minds are anxious, preoccupied with worry, fearful of the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, in your goodness, you have given us fathers and mothers whom you want us to honour. Grant that by the help of your spirit, all Christian parents may bring their children up to honour and to love you, and that children may not provoke their parents to anger, but love, respect and obey them. Keep the families of the church united. Strengthen them through your word. We remember those who have lost their parents. We pray for those who are estranged from their parents or their children. We pray for the young people of our church and community who are growing up in this pandemic universe. For children at school whose exams are going to be um, compromised, whose education has already been affected by being at home through blended learning and in other ways which have sought to keep things going but which have not been the same as being in school. We pray for our youth and children's cell. We pray for the way that we can come together in cell groups as adults. And we remember loved ones, parents, children and other relatives who are struggling at the moment because of illness, because of lockdown, because they too are going through the grief of having lost a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you have created the world and you give life to all people. Grant that by your grace all may respect the sanctity of life, including the life of the unborn. Let us do nothing to hurt or harm our neighbour in any way, but rather to be of help, especially in times of need. Lord, we recognise that murder is, a, is a, an individual act, but nations can act in such ways as to, as to diminish or destroy the lives of others. We bring to you now the nations of the world where there is conflict and where the vulnerable and the marginalised often get hurt. Let's name before God areas of our world where political expediency is leading to the taking or the losing of life. We pray for Syria and the Yemen. We pray for terrorist activity in Central Africa. We pray against policies which put people at risk, put them in situations of danger, lead them to be harmed in some way or another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you not only for families, but for that intimate relationship we call marriage. And we recognise that there are many who are wanting to enter into marriage this this last year or this year who've had their plans delayed by the pandemic. We pray for those who've been disappointed and we pray for those for whom we know marriages are taking place in this coming uh, year, in the next few months. Let's pray for those we know who have been disappointed and pray that God will bless them as they go forward into married life. Lord, we pray for marriages under stress, for those who, because of um, circumstances, um, are finding their relationship is, is being uh, put under pressure and that their love for one another is under attack. 
We pray for those who are trapped in poverty and who are worried about whether they can feed their kids or keep the lights on and who need to balance their budgets very carefully. And Father, we pray about those who've been betrayed in marriage by infidelity, by cruelty or neglect or abuse. We pray for those who are in refuges and for those who are summoning up the courage to do something about their circumstances. Lord, we know divorce is not something close to your heart, but we do pray for those who need to get out of toxic, abusive and dangerous relationships. Help us to be understanding of those in such state if we know them. And we continue to pray for those who counsel married couples and enable them to work through their problems. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the giver and preserver of all good things. Help us to value honest work as your gift and the means by which you bless not only ourselves, but our communities as well. Give us joy in our work and may we use it to serve others, serve others and do so unselfishly. If we have responsibility for people at work, may we be fair to those under uh, our management and management. And if we work in teams, help us to be considerate of our fellow teammates. And where others are tempted perhaps to break the rules of employment or to cut corners, may we be honest and behave with integrity, mindful of our witness to others of the honesty at the heart of our faith. We bring to God places of work in our community, employers, businesses and the like. Father God, we pray for the Port Arcades and its change of ownership. MacArthur Glen, m and Vauxhalls, the refinery and Airbus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, in Jesus, you have shown us that we are to love our neighbours as ourselves, even if those neighbours neighbors do not love us back. Help us to be mindful of those who live around us, those we see day by day. We may not know them, but we often see them. Help us to be good neighbours to those around us and mindful of ways in which we can bless them by serving them in the ways that you show us. We pray for communities where neighbours have fallen out and we pray for forgiveness and reconciliation. We pray for those who um, have neighbours who oppress them or abuse them or frighten them. Give them justice, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you are the owner and giver of all things. Enable us to be good stewards of all your gifts, content with what we have been given and eager to advance the cause of others who are less well off than ourselves. May we be generous and may we be content and may we be grateful with what we've been given. So may we fulfill your commandments by loving you with all we've got and loving our neighbours as ourselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. So we now come to our communion and our time of sharing the peace. You can stand if you wish where you are, or you can remain seated. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but let's share with one another Christ's peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So where you are, with those around you, let's share um, a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. So as we come to our time of communion, um, 
we're using this the the special communion prayer that we've been using throughout lockdown um which comes from the iona community so um you won't see any words on the screen but you do see the the bread and the cup um the symbols um, of christ's death and resurrection for us the lord is here his spirit is with us lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. What we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave an example and a command rooted in the experience he shared with his disciples in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. On the night on which he was betrayed, and as they were sitting at a meal, Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, it's broken for you. Do this to remember me. Later, after they had eaten, he took a cup of wine and said, this cup is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Drink this all of you to remember me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and this wine, the produce of the earth and fruit of human labor, in these, Jesus has promised to be present. Through these, Christ can make us whole. And now, lest we believe that our praise alone fulfills your purpose, we fall silent and remember him who came because words weren't enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands, we yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving, which Christ alone can offer. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and wine and fill them with the fullness of Jesus. And let that same Spirit rest on us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so wherever you are, can I encourage you just to share bread and wine or whatever you have in front of you um, as we spend this time apart but together. The body of Christ. Amen. You may be wondering how Julia could be in two places at once there. I certainly was. Um, but we're going to be moving now into a time of Thanksgiving. So Julia, over to you. 
I just want to invite you, as is our custom, to uh, express your thanksgiving for this service this morning, what you sense God's doing in your, li in your life, anything over the week, because we are spiritually strengthened as we give thanks. It's a, it is good to give thanks. So I invite you to do so where you are, in our chat box, however you want to do it, but let's say thanks. Lord, I want to thank you for the the spring sunshine we've been having this week and that's just that sense that you are renewing the face of the earth thank you lord thank you lord for the bike ride that julie and i had um in the beautiful sunshine along the greenway seeing the countryside around us in such splendor Thank you, Lord, for conversations with friends this week. Thank you for the prayer course and the example of those who love you through difficult circumstances and just how inspiring that is, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, thank you for the simple things of life that we can take for granted. Yes, we've learned through the pandemic that um, these things aren't enough. We need the fellowship of one another and of you. But thank you, Lord, for the food on our tables for the, the lights, the gas, the electricity, the water. And thank you for those, Lord, who continue to make sure they're supplied. It's aware that we've come nearly through a year of uh, lockdown beginning, and we thank you, Lord, that you've brought us through. Thank you, Lord, that you are still with us. And Lord, thank you for Emma and um, all the work that she's done behind the scenes, supporting the technical side of things, but also um, doing a very difficult job, which she never really signed up for, but which has enabled the, the kind of a, a practical um, and administrative side of our church to continue. And we do pray your blessing on her uh, as she goes on to her next job. So folks, many thank yous to say, many thank yous to put onto the chat, many thank yous to keep making. So do keep going with them, even as we move now into our closing prayer together. So again, I will say the lead and Gordon uh, is all. So wherever you lead us, Lord. We will go. Wherever you send us, Lord. We will go. Wherever you call us, Lord, we will go. Be with us, Lord, in the decisions we make and in the choices that face us. Be with us, Lord, in the people we meet and in the places where we go. Be with us, Lord, when we are alone and when we are together and give us all that we need to be your people. Amen. Amen. So we're going to come to our closing song, which is Every Giant Will Fall. Not the odd one or two, but every giant, we have all we need to be God's people. So let's celebrate that in song. I can see the promised land, though there's pain within the plan, there is victory in the is my battle cry when my fears like Jericho build the walls around my soul when my heart is overthrown your love is my battle cry the answer for all my life every giant will fall the mountains will move Every chain of the past You've broken into All the fear of the lies We're singing the truth That nothing is impossible With you With you There is hope within the fight In the wars that we
Well, well, go out this week and uh, see a few giants fall over uh, as you pray. Uh, meanwhile, it's the end of our service together this morning, but uh, don't feel you have to rush off. Grab yourself a cuppa, let us know how you're doing in the chat. Um, yeah, quiz the preacher a bit, whatever you want to do just to, to stay in touch. But uh, lovely to see you this morning yep. and God bless and have a good week. So a final prayer of blessing as we, we go into this week, and it's the, the one that we've come to use quite often. It comes at the end of the Lectio 365 um, app, and it uh, it's, uh, comes from the, the, um, the vows of the Order of the Mustard Seed, which I was focusing on yesterday in our morning prayers. So let's pray this prayer. Um, I'll pray it, but I'm praying on behalf of all of us, and we can pray it together. And if you do know it, say it where you are. Heavenly Father, Help us to give ourselves to you, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Holy Spirit, enable us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do or say. Amen. So, folks, bye for now. Um, we're just going to go over to the, uh, uh, the coffee coffee time and the, the closing slide and uh, we'll give this a few minutes and then I'll be um, closing the meeting once um, we've we stopped sharing our news and chat with each other so God bless and have a great week bye for now bye